Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct and interpret a multivariate ANOVA. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you can find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of the data below. Multivariate analysis of variance, or MANOVA, allows us to analyze a series of continuous dependent variables as a function of a single categorical variable. And this can be a very powerful tool when you have multiple dependent variables and you want to examine at the same time. Now, in this video, I'm going to keep things relatively simple, and we're going to use one categorical variable, which is gender. But gender is coded as one, two, or three, with three being other. And I know from looking at these data that three only has a few cases. So to simplify things, first things first, we're going to actually exclude cases where someone responds other. And to do that, I'm going to use the select cases tool. So data, select cases. And I'm going to say if condition is satisfied, and then I'll click if gender is less than three, because I know that male and female are coded as one and two. So if it's less than three, that'll only include male and female. And then I'll click continue and I'll click okay. And we'll actually be examining two of these measures of importance. These are measures that identify what's important when deciding what video to watch. And for this, why don't we just pick these two right here, video production and audio quality. So in other words, how important is it that the video is produced with high quality and, or that the audio quality is very high? And we'll see if those differ as a function of gender. And to do that, we go up to Analyze, General Linear Model, Multivariate. And this window appears, and there's quite a bit for us to do here. So the first thing we need to do is define our dependent variables. And note that unlike ANOVA, we have a box where we can put multiple options in. And so I'll put in these video and audio importance measures, and you can put as many as you need as long as they're continuous variables. For a fixed factor, that's what we're going to be predicting with. We can scroll down to gender, and we'll include that here. Note that there's also a covariate box. So if we wanted to do a MANCOVA, a multivariate analysis of covariance, we could do that as well. And the interpretation would actually be the same as I have from a previous video where I talk about ANCOVA or analysis of covariance and I'll link to that below. So there's a few things that we actually need to select. First under plots, I like to always include a plot of the data because I find visualizing data to be much more useful than just looking at numbers. So gender being our independent variable, we'll put that in the horizontal axis. We'll click add. I like to use bar charts rather than line charts, though it doesn't really matter. And I also like to include error bars with 95% confidence intervals because again, that lets me visualize the data a little bit more cleanly. And then I'll click continue. Under post hoc, we actually don't really need this because we only have two levels of our independent variable. So there's really no post hoc test to run. But just to show you what the output looks like, I'll include that over here and I'll select the Bonferroni corrected comparisons. What this will do is it will make every pairwise comparison possible from the levels of our independent variable, but it will penalize us for the fact that we don't have any a priori hypotheses and actually increase the p values to reflect that. And so we'll click continue. And finally, under EM means, I'm going to move both of these over to the right to indicate that I want the estimated marginal means at each level of our independent variable. And then I'll click continue, and that's all we need. So we can click OK and see what the result looks like. Well, funny enough, we did get this warning that says post hoc tests are not performed for gender because there's only two levels, so I guess we won't see the outputs there. But I'll try another analysis in just a moment so you can see what that looks like. Well, the first thing we care about is right here. This tells us how many individuals are in each of our categories. So we had 363 male respondents and 634 female respondents. And then we can come down to this multivariate test. This is kind of like our overall ANOVA test, but it's actually looking at collapsing across our dependent variables. Is there a difference across our levels of our independent variable? And the test for that is right here. It's this Wilkes Lambda test. And we look to see if that is statistically significant. And it is here, which is basically saying overall, across all of our dependent variables, there appears to be something going on as a function of our independent variables. To understand exactly what that something is, we need to scroll a little bit further down. Here are our tests of between subject effects. This is where everything gets interesting. So right here is gender. And what we see now is that we have two different dependent variables represented. Here's the quality of the video production, and here's the quality of the audio of the video. And if we go over to the right here, we see that for this variable, for the quality of the video production, there is no significant difference as a function of gender. But there is a significant difference for the quality of the audio. So it seems like male versus female respondents do differentiate the audio quality when determining whether to watch a video, not so much the video quality. And if we scroll down even further, we can see what that actually looks like. Right here, we have our estimated marginal means as a function of male-female, as a function of gender, for each of our dependent variables. And we see that for this quality of video production, the means are 3.6 and 3.64, which we said are not statistically differentiable. However, for audio quality, the means are 3.77 versus 3.96. And even though that's a pretty small absolute difference, that difference is statistically significant. If we scroll down even further, we can see that visualized. So again, here is the quality of the video production, no difference here. 
but here's the quality of the audio production. And we see that females seem to value that more than males do in our data. And again, that is a statistically significant result. We saw that from above. Now, just to give you a flavor of what those Bonferroni corrected comparisons look like, I'm gonna remove my select case criteria. So if we go back to data, select cases, I'll click all cases, and I'll just rerun this analysis. So you can see with three levels of an independent variable, what the results look like, especially with those Bonferroni corrected comparisons. So if I click this box, it'll be the most recent analyses that I ran. I could click multivariate, and then I can click OK just to rerun the whole analysis exactly as we had it. And note, there's only three responses in this other category, so the results are not going to be very robust, but just so you can see what they look like, we'll scroll down. So here are post hoc Bonferroni corrected comparisons, and what this is saying is for every pairwise comparison, male versus female, male versus other, female versus male, female versus other, and so on, are those differences statistically significant for each level of our dependent variable? Here's the first set, and here's the second set. And we see that for the quality of the video production, those significance levels are all one. Now, statistical significance can't go above one, so this is actually just hitting a ceiling. But basically, all those pairwise comparisons do not come back significant. If we actually look for the quality of audio and how important that is, we see that male versus female is statistically significant even after we make that correction for multiple comparison. So even though we didn't have an a priori hypothesis, the Bonferroni correction adjusted for that. And even after that adjustment, that comparison is significant and it is robust. So I have pretty high confidence that that difference is meaningful and real. And the other thing we see actually is now we've got our charts plotting those results and you see how wide those error bars are for the other category because we have so few respondents. That's it for multivariate analysis of variance or MANOVA. And again, it's a very useful tool for examining multiple dependent variables at the same time as a function of a single categorical variable. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.